Today we're going to take a look at uh, lab four, uh, combining logic gates. Uh, we're going to use gates that we're already familiar with, the uh, NAND gate, the inverter, the AND gate, the NAND gate, the OR gate. And what we're going to do is we're going to use these in combinations. Now I've included on your lab page uh, a list of Boolean laws and all the chapters they came from. I just went out and found this uh, table on the internet. Uh, most of these should look familiar to you if you have been reading your uh, textbook and we'll be using some of these laws today. Part A of your lab comes directly from your textbook. It's one of your textbook examples and you can see that we've got two gates that we're going to use. They're both AND gates and we've got an OR gate. So you'll notice the AND gate is labeled U1A and U1B. So we're going to use A gate and B gate. And then over here we're going to use U2 and it's A gate. So U2 is a 7432. Now I want you to notice that the 7408 and the 7408 that's not two ICs. A lot of times students come to me and say I only have one 7408 in my parts kit. You'll notice that this is U1A and this is U1B. When you're looking at the pinouts for the 7408, you'll notice there's one, two, three, four gates in one IC. So this is U1A, this is U1B. So when you're looking at the schematic, this is U1A, this is U1B, this is 1IC. This is an OR gate, 7432, this is your second IC. So when you look at the schematic, there are two ICs, the AND gate and the OR gate. At this point, it becomes very important to label your schematic with the PIN numbers. Up to this point, you have been able to do them in your head, but when it comes to actually wiring up multiple gates with multiple ICs, the PIN numbers really make life easy for you. So this is the circuit in your lab book, and it's section 3.5, Combining Logic Gates. So I just took this example straight from your textbook. This is your uh, truth table from your textbook and in this case I just want you to notice that they've labeled the uh, truth table A, B, and C instead of C, B, and A. So they've gone A, B, C instead with the output on Y. So using a pencil we're going to label our uh, schematic diagram. Uh, remember that uh, VCC is on pin 14 ground is on pin 7. Now you're saying why do they ask for this twice? It's because each IC needs its own power and ground. So 14 and 7 on the 7432, 14 and 7 on the 7408. Now A is going to go to pin 1, B is going to go to pin 2. The output will be on pin 3. The second gate uses pin 4 and pin 5 and the output on pin 6. Then over on the 7432 the input's going to be on pin 1 and pin 2 and the output's on pin 3. Notice it specifies that we're going to use the A gate. The A gate is pin 1, 2, and 3. Now I've started wiring the circuit up. Uh, the first chip in here is the 7408. The second one is the 7432. Now I've already got some wires in here. So this is pin 14 on the AND gate and pin 14 on the uh, OR gate. 
and pin 7 that goes to ground and pin 7 that goes to ground on both of those ICs. Now I've already got my dip switch set up and because I'm using three inputs I have three ground wires. So when all three switches are down, down is logic zero. It's connected to those three ground wires. At the back I have my SIP resistor, which you can't see, with pin one of the SIP resistor going to plus five. And then I've labeled my first switch A, followed by B, followed by C. So A is the blue wire on here and that goes to pin 1. Yellow is B and that goes to pin 2. And the white wire is switch C. Switch C goes to pin 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I've also wired up pin 3 of the OR gate which is the output and it goes to the long leg of the LED. The short leg of the LED goes through the resistor to ground. So as you can see on my schematic, the 7432, the output on pin 3 goes to an LED through a resistor to ground. Now what you might find very useful is to take a uh, yellow highlighter and just go over the lines that you've wired up. So pin 3 goes through the LED to a resistor and from the resistor it goes to ground. Also notice I've hooked up A switch to pin 1. I've hooked up my B switch to pin 2 and I've hooked up my C switch to pin 5. Now you'll notice that the B switch also goes to pin 4. So as I said, the B switch also needs to go to pin 4. So this is the A switch, the yellow line is the B switch and I need it to go to pin 4. At this point everybody takes a long yellow wire and runs it from the B switch back here over to pin 4. And that's perfectly okay to do but notice that's a long piece of wire to put in there. Another method is to go from pin 2 To pin 4 using a short piece of wire. It's accomplished the same thing. The yellow wire is going from B to pin 2 and from pin 2 to pin 4. So B comes to pin 2 and gets to pin 4 through this small wire from pin 2. So back on my schematic this wire that comes from pin 4 is now connected to pin 2, which is also connected back here to the B switch. By using a highlighter, I can see which wires have been connected and which wires have not been connected. So you can see I've got to run from pin 3 of my AND gate to pin 1 of my OR gate. And I also have to run a wire from pin 6 of my AND gate to pin 2 of my OR gate. So over here on my circuit I'm just going to use a blue wire. I'm going to go from pin 3 of my AND gate over to pin 1 of my OR gate. And then I need another wire that goes from pin 6 of my AND gate to pin 2 of my OR gate. So 
So back here on my schematic, I'm going to highlight I went from pin 3 to pin 1 and from pin 6 to pin 2. So once all your wires are highlighted, you know you've finished wiring up your circuit. The next part of the lab, we need to know what the output's going to be. Before we start moving our dip switches around, it really makes sense to know what your output's going to look like so you know whether your circuit's operating correctly or not. So what I like to do is I like to come along at the input of each of my gates. I'm going to say that this is the input from switch A. This is the input from switch B. On here, this is the input from switch B. And this is the input from switch C. So on my output here, I have A and B or you can say A, B. My output here, I have B and C. These are also the inputs to my OR gate. So on the output of my OR gate, I have A, B, OR, B, C. The first part of my expression is AB. So wherever A is 1 and B is 1, I will have a 1 on my truth table. So when I'm filling in my truth table, wherever I have A and B are 1. So here's a place where A and B are 1. And here's a place where A and B are 1. So these two outputs are going to be 1. The second part of my expression is BC. So on my truth table, wherever B is 1 and C is 1, I'm going to have an output 1. So on my truth table, where B is 1 and C is 1, I'm going to have an output of 1. And down here, where B is 1 and C is 1, I'm going to have an output of 1. Notice it's already 1 from A and B both being 1. So all these others are going to be zeros. You'll notice this corresponds to the truth table in your textbook. So I'm going to power on my circuit and slowly work through my truth table. You'll notice that all of the switches are down and the output is zero. My next input has C at one and the light is still off. Now B is at one and the light is still off. Now in the next combination B and C are both one and the light is on. Next combination, A is 1, B and C are 0, the light is off. Next combination, the light is still off. Now we're going to do A is 1 and B is 1 and C is 0. You'll notice the light is on. And then the last line where A, B, and C are 1, the light is on. This corresponds to our truth table. We can just take the Boolean expression that we calculated to fill in our truth table and place it in where it says write the Boolean expression for output Y. So that was A, B, or B, C. Once you've wired up the circuit of part A and verified that it is working, demonstrate it to your instructor so that they can initial it to indicate that it is complete. Part B of the lab uses a AND gate and an inverter. 
we're going to use the A gate, B gate, and C gate of the inverter. And on the second IC, we're going to use the A gate. So I remember that these are one, two, three. VCC is 14 and 7. And of course, the second IC needs its own power and ground. The pin numbers for the 7404 input on 1, output on 2. B gate, input on 3, output on 4. C gate, input on 5 output on 6. You'll notice that we're only going to use two inputs, A and B. So the first thing you're going to want to do is calculate the uh, Boolean expression for this. So A comes in and becomes A naught. B comes in and becomes B naught. They go through the AND gate and the expression on the output of the AND gate is A naught B naught. Notice there is a space between the not lines. Do not connect them together. This expression now goes into the inverter and comes out as A naught B naught all knotted. Now to simplify this formula we can use De Morgan's theorem. De Morgan's theorem says we can break the bar and change the sign. So this expression now becomes A bar bar or B bar bar. And you'll notice from the laws on the Boolean expressions the two bars cancel each other out. So this whole expression becomes A or B. Filling in the truth table, 0, 0 is 0. When A is 1, we have a 1. When B is 1, we have a 1. When B is 1 or A is 1, we have a 1. You'll notice this is exactly like the OR gate but we've used inverters to change the AND gate into an OR gate. We're asked for an unsimplified expression. The unsimplified expression is A with a bar on it and B with a bar on it, all barred. So we can see the effect of the first inverter, the second inverter, and the third inverter. Then we're going to use De Morgan's simplified Boolean expression, which ended up being A or B. I'm not going to wire up this circuit for you. It's fairly straightforward. The only thing to note is pin 2 of the 7404 goes into pin 1 of the 7408 and pin 3 of the 7408 goes back into pin 5 of the 7404. If you use the highlighter on each line as you install each wire you should have no difficulty wiring this circuit. Once you've wired up the circuit of part B and verified that it is working, demonstrate it to your instructor so that they can initial it to indicate that it is complete. Part C of Lab 4 is going to be a little more challenging for you. You'll notice that we're using 1, 2, 3, 4 NAND gates. These are your two input NAND gates, so that's the 7400. And then we're going to use the three input NAND gate, which is the 7410. Notice both ICs once again need their own power and ground. So 14 and 7, 14 and 7. 
The pinouts for the 7400 are on the front page of lab number three. So gate one, we have the input on pin one and two, and output is on pin three. Then the B gate, we have the input on pin four and pin five, and the output on pin six. The C gate is on pin 10 and pin 9. The output is on pin 8. And for the D gate, we use pin 13, pin 12, and the output on pin 11. Notice on the 7410, which has its pinouts also on the front of lab 3, we're going to be using gate B. So 74LS10, gate B. Gate B has an input on pin 3, pin 4, and pin 5, the output being on pin 6. When you're wiring this up, I want you to notice on the NAND gate, the U1C, or the C gate of the 7400, pin 9 and pin 10 go to A. So a wire can go from pin 9 to pin 10. Same thing down here on the D gate, pin 12 goes to pin 13. So these could have been straight inverters. But because we're using the NAND gate and we had two gates that were not used, by putting both inputs together, we've created an inverter. So this NAND gate and this NAND gate are acting as inverters. Now the one thing I want you to notice here is that this gate, this gate, and this gate, and this gate, all four gates are in one IC. This gate here is on a different IC. So this is called U1 because it's the 7400. This is U2 because it's the 7410. I'm going to let you determine the Boolean expression and fill in your own truth table. There are hints on the Boolean expression. This would be an, a letter like A or B or C. The smaller line would be for a dot if it's an AND, or a plus sign if it's OR, and you'd have to put the bars over the top. So for each stage, do not forget to put your bars in. This section is for your simplified expression. Don't forget to use De Morgan and all those Boolean laws that we've covered in class. Once you've wired up the circuit of part C, and verified that it is working, demonstrate it to your instructor so that they can initial it to indicate that it is complete. On the last page of the lab, we have seven questions for you to answer and hand in. If you are looking for answers, open your textbook. Page one of the lab shows some hints and here we're showing solve problems 3.1 through to 50, 4.1 through to 63, 6.1 through 8, 6.12 through 18. Mm -hmm.